So, y'all ready for another story of the end of everything? Well, we know one day the sun will burn so bright that it will burn every trace off the face of the earth that humanity ever even existed. Who said the sun will shine tomorrow? Here's the bad news. One day the sun will not shine tomorrow. It won't shine anymore. Eventually the sun will die. It will be a beautiful thing to say, but there's a bit of a problem. Long before the dying sun will simply have swallowed the earth. In case you didn't know, the sun, in fact, a huge nuclear power plant it runs on hydrogen. The sun transfers hydrogen atoms into helium by nuclear fusion. It's nothing like the puny hydrogen bombs humanity finds so impressive. Each second, no less than 400 million tons of hydrogen goes boom. Unfortunately, the amount of fuel inside the sun is limited. You can't see it, but in fact, that huge light bulb in the sky we call the sun shrinks and cools down a tiny little bit every second. The sun is middle-aged. In another 5,000 million years, it will run out of hydrogen. Long before we notice the consequences, on the one hand, the sun will get brighter and warmer. On the other hand, as the sun shrinks and becomes less heavy, its gravitational pull on the Earth will loosen. Consequently, the orbit of our planet and all the other planets in the solar system will widen. Okay, so an earthly year will be several weeks longer, but don't, don't mistake, there's a downside here. It will get cooler, and not just a little bit. Within only several billions of years, Earth will become icy, permafrost planet, where it'll be very hard to survive. Well, we're still lucky, really. When the sun eventually runs out of hydrogen, the nuclear reactions inside the sun's core will stop. There will be no explosive force pushing outwards from the rest of the heart of the sun anymore. The sun will collapse, pressed together by its own gravity. Subsequently, temperatures inside the sun will rise even more. And lucky we, there will be another nuclear reaction sparking off. The sun will start fusing helium into carbon and hydrogen this time. Kaboom! This will prevent the sun from collapsing any further. Finally, we'll have the warmth again. But wait, we, we're in trouble. A nuclear power plant that runs on helium gives off a hell of a lot of more energy and heat than one that runs on hydrogen. The new immense power of the sun's core will literally blow up the sun. The sun will grow, eating up several planets. First Mercury, then Venus, and next on the menu, yes, Earth. Sure, it's going to become quite hot. Rivers will evaporate, causing dense hot fogs. The polar ice caps will melt, causing the oceans to rise and entire countries to flood. But then the sea will evaporate as well. Long before the solar surface reaches our planet, we will simply be barbecued to death. Sadly, there is no happy ending. Eventually, Earth will be swallowed by the growing sun. Our planet will burn up in its ultra-hot outer layers. Of course, we still have some 5,000 million years to come up with a solution for this nasty problem. For one thing, we might evacuate or even find a way to move our entire planet away from the sun. But even then, it's highly unlikely we will enjoy the sun as much as we once did. Since the sun has expanded so much, its outer parts will cool down. The sun's surface will become cool, deep red. It will be a red giant. Giant being just the right name for an object that just ate our planet. So there we are in our spaceship, or wherever we are, glancing back at our giant red sun. Will that be it? No, it won't. Even the helium into carbon reaction doesn't last forever. Eventually, after another hundred million years or so, the sun runs out of helium as well. The nuclear reactions will stop again, and gravity will take over once more. The sun's core will collapse even further. But this time, a dramatic change will occur. The sun simply won't have enough gravity gravitational strength to hold itself together any longer. The sun's outer, outer layers will be pushed off into space. In other words, the sun will evaporate and explode. There will be a big nebula of super hot solar gas flinging off in all directions. A beautiful sight, but not for us poor things. For many millions of years in a row, it will be like we're on a grill of a barbecue. And what's more, spaceship or no spaceship, there will be radiation lots of it. 
Okay, so we decide to keep it cool and move our spaceship further and further away from the dying sun. Still, even that won't be it. After the solar gases and all the radiation have passed by, we will find that our Vex sun has become a white dwarf, a tiny, insignificant dot in the sky, still very hot, but since there's no longer any nuclear reactions going on inside them, cooling down fast. Should we move our spaceship back to the sun to cache some warmth? Well, we better not. For one thing, the gravity of our deceased sun will be way too big to cope with. Void dwarfs are incredibly dense. Although our ex-sun will only, have the si only be the size of the Earth, it will still have the same mass as a star. A cubic centimeter may weigh several tons, so by the time we've reached the distance where it's warm and comfortable, our spaceship would simply crash into it. Oh well, what's the point of in visiting white dwarves anyway? In the end, more millions of years later, the sun will be cooled down so much it will no longer give off any warmth at all. It will be a dull, extinguished object called a black dwarf. Bye-bye, beautiful summer. Let's talk about the Macbeth sentence. Uh, it's all fury and sound signifying nothing. Are we all dumb? So wh wh when did you get conscious about this fact? <laughs> you, I got conscious at a very young age, but it becomes increasingly more evident as you get older um, that uh, you know you start to think when you're younger how important everything is and how things have to go right and your job, your career, your life and your choices and all that. And then after a while you start to realize that, um, I'm taking the big picture here, that eventually you die and eventually the sun burns out and the earth is gone and eventually all the stars and all the planets, the entire universe goes, disappears, and nothing is left at all. Nothing Shakespeare's or Beethoven or, you know, all gone, Michelangelo, gone. And you think to yourself, uh, it is a lot of noise and sound and fury, and uh, where's it going? Not going anyplace. It's going you know, uh, look, everybody's in the world now, and we're all United States and Afghanistan and Israel and Arabs and this president, the economy, and someone else is saying, I hope my movie is good at Khan, and my wife is saying, I hope they send my dress back from the cleaners in time when I go to the thing. And then uh, every hundred years, somebody presses a button, and a big toilet flushes and everybody on the earth changes. Everybody. All the Muslims are gone, all the Afghanistans, all the Americans, everybody on the planet's gone. And a new set comes in and they're full of worry and anxious and they're doing everything and then, button, they're Boom. all gone. And then the, every hundred years it's like the whole planet gets washed clean of everybody on it, all these people that are making your life miserable, your next door neighbors, your people that are robbing you in the street, and you know, all gone. The president and the, the bank robber, and they all out. So, you know, it just seems like a big, meaningless thing. Uh, now, you can't actually live your life like that. Because if you do, you just sit there and you, you, why do anything? Why get up in the morning and do anything? So I think it's the job of the artist to try and figure out why, given this terrible fact, do you, why, why do you want to go on living? Why do, you, why do you care about anything if this terrible truth is there, this meaningless end of everything? And you have to try and figure out, knowing that it's true, not giving yourself a fake heaven and hell and nonsense, but knowing the worst. Figure out, even knowing the worst, why it's still worthwhile. Um, that's a tough assignment, 
to to explain to somebody why it's so terrible and why it's still important to uh, go on. And this is a, a challenge for artists all the time to try and figure it out.